Hey guys, NS Productions 8104 here, and today is the first episode of the Lakeview Back Shops. So today, how this is going to go, we're going to go in order like this. We're going to do new locomotives, locomotive projects, new rolling stock, and rolling stock projects. That's how this is going to go. We're not going to go through all the rolling stocks and just major things I've added, um, like the train sets and stuff. We'll do more of rolling stock in episode two. But let's get in this first one. We're going to primarily focus on new locomotives. So, sitting here in front of us today on the yard track is a Proto 2000 SD9 from the Nickel Plate Road. I bought this engine to model after 358, which was just re restored by the uh, Fort Wayne Historical Society. If that's not correct, I am sorry, but you guys know what I'm talking about. They're the owners and operators of 765. I bought this to run, to model, and eventually run with a Nickel Plate Road 765 so I can do modern day excursions and get uh still do some old school excursions the one thing i will not be doing to this model that they did to the real locomotive is that they added ditch lights and i understand why they had to because you know fra regulations but i'm going to keep it as like this so i can run it back during when it was brand new and now so that way i can run it during multiple eras because um i have friends who have uh 1950s, 1960-era layout, so I can bring this to run there. This will be getting a look sound V5. It's already got an LED. I redid the light. I did the light package. I bought an SP light package because I just needed the gyro light, so I installed a gyro light in the front and rear. Let me pick it up. Here's the gyro light. It's got LEDs. It's going to be getting uh, LEDs from the number boards. It's going to get redone number boards. So this is an ongoing project, but this is a new locomotive. So, we'll go on to the next one. Alright, locomotive number two. This is a Bachman GP38-2. This is from their standard line. Um, the plan with this guy is, I just bought it off a friend, but the plan with this guy is it's going to get a snowplow, it's going to get ditch lights, it's going to be stripped, it's going to be super detailed, all the molded on grab irons are going to get uh, chopped off, the uh, marker lights here are going to get nicked off. i got to see if, it's able, if I'm able to light these... Uh, able to light the number boards but so that's what the plan is with this guy um, it's going to be renumbered to 5618 because that's one of the few GP38s with the 3600 gallon fuel tank like I'm shown here on the model um, it's going to get etched metal lift rings all along the top uh, it's going to get the full package I might even actually try to find some A-line steps to do photo etched steps Here's the back of it. So, yeah. All those are going to get chopped off. It's going to get super detailed. It's going to get custom grab irons and all that fun stuff. The one thing I don't like about it is, like, this No Fuck Southern logo is way off-center. So, I got to get that fixed. So, yeah. That's the second locomotive I have purchased over the course of between layout update 18 and now, which is January 9th, 2024. All right, new locomotive number three. This is a Kato AC4400CW in the BNSF YN2 paint scheme. I bought this at my train show back in March of 2023 uh, for about 100 bucks. It came with a NCE decoder, mobile decoder. I tore that out. It's got Loke Pilot. I've done some work to it. I've redone the ditch lights. Uh, I removed the light piping, and now I actually got uh, 402s mounted directly in the housings. I uh, cut back the light piping for the number boards, redid those with LEDs. Like I said, this has got a low pile in it, so it's also speed matched all my scale trains engines. It was actually featured in the scale trains AC4400 review, but I figured, you know, let's show it off here. It is slightly weathered a little bit. Hopefully, uh, my plan is to uh, find prototype photos from around the 2000s and detail it. I did do a little bit of weathering myself. I got some Tamiya panel liner and I did it in the grills they just make them look so much better but this will get weathered up to look like the real locomotive uh, eventually I am planning on putting a Lokesound V5 in this I'm also going to tear off all these plastic oversized grab wires and replace them with wire um, I do have the paint for this the hardest was finding the BNSF green but I do have paint to redo all that so that way this looks better it's going to get actual uh, etch metal lift rings here no one makes, sadly, a nice detail kit for the grills, so this should stay as is. They look good as is, anyway. 
this is definitely an older model. It's definitely showing its age, um, but it's probably it's also going to get the etched metal steps that I'm going to put on eventually. It, it does come with the, I do I do like the fact that it comes with couple uh, cut levers, MU cable, MU uh, MU receptacles, and uh, it. MU hose, like all that nice stuff. It comes with this. Does have the proper SF coupler on the front, and I also put one on the rear, so it is per prototype. Because BNSF puts SF couplers on their locomotives. So that is locomotive number three. Let's go on to number four. All right, locomotive number four. As you guys can see, this is a Nickel Plate Road Berkshire. This is Nickel Plate Road 765, which I custom painted and decaled. This is a Proto 2000 uh, Steam Heritage Collection Berkshire. I bought it off of Trains with a Z. My old one, as you guys know, had the eccentric crank brake on it. So I bought a new one, replaced it, decaled it. The decals are from the Nickel Plate Road Historical Society, something along those lines. Uh, they're somewhere out of Ohio. They make steam locomotive decals. That's where I got these from. Uh, so it does have the correct blacked out number boards on the side of the... Headlight per apparent uh, late era Burks. So when they added the flying number boards, they got rid of the numbers along the side of the headlight here. So those are pretty typical. It does have an LED. This does have a low, sound, uh, low pilot decoder. This will be getting a TCS Wow Sound. The reason why I'm going with TCS Wow Sound is because they do make the accurate Nickel Plate Road 765 whistle. They're the only ones. Lock Sound does not have a sound file which I checked a couple months ago. I don't know if anyone's uploaded it. But they don't have a sound file for a Berkshire, and they don't have the whistle. With modeling this locomotive, you need that particular whistle because it's synonymous with the locomotive. So we're going to put... I'm going to buy a TCS Wild Sound. It's going to be speed matched to my scale trains, so that way it runs. Right now, it's got a look pilot, like I said, so I can run it with my scale trains. But this is a beautiful locomotive. It's a great run. The one thing I did have to do is I had to replace the main drive gear. There's a guy on eBay. He's out of Ohio. He 3D prints new drive gears for these Berkshires, and I'm telling you, this thing runs beautifully. It runs better than the old one, which did have a slightly cracked gear. This one was severe. I could not fix this. I tried, and in fact, I actually made it worse. So, I had to replace the whole gear entirely. Like I said, I bought it off a guy on eBay. If I find his profile, I will copy it in the description below. So, this is locomotive number four. Um, we have three more new locomotives. All of them have already been in video, so they'll be a little bit quicker. I might even triple head them, so that way we can get a night, uh, get this a little bit over, so we can move on to the projects. All right, locomotives number five and six. So here, the back engine needs no introduction. This is the brand new Scale Trains AC Forty Four Hundred CW that I did a review on CSX uh, One One Three. I have not done anything to this locomotive besides change the horn, which you guys saw me do in the video. Uh, it still runs great, sounds great, looks great. It will be getting wetter eventually once I get my airbrush fixed and up and running. I'm customizing the setup a little bit better. Um, the second locomotive here is from the latest run of Tier 4s. This is Norfolk Southern 3641. Uh, like I said, this is a Tier 4 Gevo. These are rarely right towards the end of my era that I'm modeling. These were bought in 2016, delivered around late 2016, early 2017. So literally right at the end of my era. But I did want a Tier 4 just because they are nice locomotives and scale trains really makes these things chunks. This thing is heavy. It's actually about... It might be heavier or a little bit lighter than the new AC 4400s, but this is a chunk. I have ran these two together, and they have pulled this 30 car heavy coal train, this heavy manifest train, sorry, not coal train, which normally takes about two or three engines to run. I typically run with three engines, so that way I'm not overloading the two locomotives, because it does. I do have a grade, as most people know, on that, that side of the layout over there. There is a uphill grade, so... I normally run this with about three locomotives. This train here with three locomotives. But these two can haul it perfectly fine. So, yeah. Those are two. So, we'll go on to number six and seven. We got two left for new locomotives of 2023 and early 2024. All right. All right. Locomotive number six. This is the new Scale Trains ES44s. This is the latest from Scale Trains ES44s. This is obviously the Lehigh Valley Heritage Unit, which most of you know it is part of my channel name it was my first heritage unit i ever saw and if you're new well there's some new information for you this is my all-time favorite ns heritage unit this is not the original the original had it was a weird one-off not 100 prototypical scheme that they did basically the step wells here were black the front pilot was black uh they only had the lehigh valley yellow logo there the flag was incorrect enough people complained about it that they put it back in the paint shop 
and they redid it accurately with the striping, the red frame, and all that. So this is the new scale trains run. This is apparently uh, 2016 on up. I might actually try to remove this PTC antenna and add a GPS dome because most of the era I model is before PTC was really heavily mandated and involved on the Norfolk Southern system. I gotta do a little bit more research if that's the case. If not, it's just gonna stay as is. It's not gonna get weathered just because of the fact that the era I modeled these were brand new. So I do have a reason why to have this brand new and fresh paint. So this is one of the, the most of my heritage units will not be weathered. I'm saying that right now. Most of them will not be weathered just because of the fact that they're the heritage units and I like them quite a bit. Um, I actually got to undo the weathering I did to my uh, SC60E. Um, that is going to be easy though because most of that I did on the trucks and the uh, fuel tanks. So that's just an easy black repaint and hand paint some of the details back on. But so yeah, this is the new Scale Trans ES44. This does come with the painted wheels like the AC4400. I was surprised to see that and I'm actually kind of glad. I think that's now going to be a standard feature on all their new locomotives is the painted side uh, wheel sides. That's a really nice feature. I really like that. I, I don't have to sit here tear apart the trucks and crap to paint the wheels to make them look a little bit better because that shiny metal... When it, the light hits it at just the right angle, it looks not realistic at all. So I do like that. So we'll go on to the last brand new locomotive, and then we'll go on to the project engines, which should be a little bit quicker because a lot of them are engines you guys have seen. Some of them are not, um, but because they were more projects than new, that's why I didn't show them off in the new, uh, new locomotive sections. So if they're new, I'll let you know, and I'll explain what I did to them. So the last new locomotive is obviously another locomotive that needs no introduction. It is the new Bachman. Um, I don't think it's part of their Spectrum line, but it is a part of the latest run of Bachman with TCS Wow Sound. But it is the J3A Hudson number 5438. The only mod, uh, so this engine is pretty much stock out of the box. The only thing I did do is I did paint the black and metal drivers black to make it look a little bit better. I also painted the uh, actual bell holder here i don't know exactly what it's called but i'm calling it the holder black on the uh one molded at piece so it looks like two pieces it actually does make it look a, quite a bit better um the model's still pretty much stock the only thing i did was i took off the bachman easy make couplers i put on a nice mchenry on the front um that's probably the one thing mchenry's are good for i know a couple other people on youtube do it but i don't really double head my steam locomotives and if i do i put kd number fives or scale heads on them but since this is a passenger locomotive and won't be really on freight trains you know they were used on freight trains later in their service lives but it's got a plastic McHenry on it and on the rear it's got an actual metal KD one uh, scale head coupler on it semi scale head coupler on it it's a really nice engine runs great sounds great as you guys know you guys there's a review on us if you want to go check that out it's on my channel but so now we're on to project locomotives so let's get into it all right sorry about this but I did forget about three locomotives that I did buy um, and they're new to the railroad. So these is three Proto 1000 Erie builds. It's two A units and a B unit. They're all powered. They got Digitrax decoders in them. Bought the, all three for $120 from two separate bids on eBay right around end of October, early November. So these three locomotives are great. They run great. They're smooth. They're quiet. They're insane. For being almost 20, 30 years old, they run just as well as the new scale trains engines. Like, I love them. They got huge can motors that are located in the middle of these things because, you know, full with cow bodies. But these engines are great. I've done LEDs to the A units. I'm actually going to be adding the rear lights to these units. It's probably the only thing I will do because I'm not going to go through and cut all the plastic molded on grab irons on and try to add separate applied ones because then it's going to mess up all the decaling and the paintwork. And I'm just like, nope. But these units look good as is. I really like them. I run them quite a bit. I actually have something that will show in the part two, basically, here probably in the next couple days or the next week or so, of the freight car section of the Lakeview back shops. Because this video is probably already going to be close to 30 minutes just with the locomotives. And with the rolling stock, you're going to get close to almost an hour. So we'll do a couple shorter videos, or maybe we'll do some run-bys of maybe some shorts of you will upload a couple shorts of these the new trains running you know, so all right so yeah sorry about this late entry but yeah those are the last three new locomotives i bought in 2023 the fm the fairbanks morris eerie builds beautiful set i love that new york central freight scheme 
So here's one of the first Project Locomotives I did, and it's kind of fitting that this one's the first one I'm going to show off. This is the first one I did of 2023. This is an Intermountain SD40-2. This was an ex-Conrail unit. I did buy this in Conrail paint. Um, the reason why I bought a Conrail unit is because I wanted the Flexi Coil trucks. I think that's what they're called. Don't quote me on that. I'm not an EMD guy. I'm a GE guy. I'm a modeler. I'm not going to get everything 100%. So, this is pretty much standard out of the box in terms of stock detail. Everything's still on it that was on it when I bought it. Even the horn's still in the right place. Uh, the only thing I did have to do was I stripped it. And obviously put in the horse head scheme and actually added ditch lights to the front. The one thing I still need to do is I need to do the safety straight on the front pilot. On the rear. And actually add a clay weed cutter plow. Uh, 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 sorry, no, they removed the plow, but I do need to add the ditch light. This will be getting locks on. This has got a lock pilot 4.0 in it, uh, lock pilot in it, uh, version 4. Uh, it does have lit number boards, uh, custom to the number boards. It has, uh, headlights, uh, headlight, rear light, ditch lights. Um, I gotta do some research to see if this thing had truck lights, because if it did, I'm gonna add truck lights to it and then model them. But this is a very nice unit. Uh, some of the decals are falling off, because I have not clear coated kit yet because like I said I still have to do the rear and the front so I will probably get this done in the next couple months because it is modeling season it's winter up here in uh, northern Pennsylvania so it's definitely modeling season so I'll definitely be working on this this is one of the engines I really want to get done but it runs great um, it runs perfectly speed out with the scale trans SD40-2 in fact it lives on the railroad it's my second uh, yard switcher slash local locomotive that I use for my local runs and everything on the railroad. So without further ado, let's go on to locomotive number two. All right, locomotive number two is actually technically locomotive number two and three because this is a pair. So as you guys can see, these are no folk Southern ST40Es. These are originally were ST50s that NS we built in the early 2010s to ST40-2 standards. And then they used them a lot on the horseshoe curve as helping units, which is what I'm modeling. I do have the helper link box, bought those from CMR.com. CMR, great place to get model train parts, decals, and supplies. Go check them out. It's CMRproducts.com. Great people, great products. So let's start off with the back here. The back unit, the 3601, is a X. Uh, after, uh, not after, Walter's mainline SD50. It was originally No Fork Southern, but it's now been renumbered the uh, 6301. And the roster does state that this is one of the SD50Ss that NS rebuilt. So this was a short and framed SD50. They, I'm just keeping it as is. It's not going to be 100% because sadly I don't think anyone in HS scale and plastic at least has made an SD50S. But anyway, so this one's got the unique uh, ditch lights embedded in the actual anti climber. So I did model that. Uh, it's just got LEDs. It's got lit number boards and all that fun stuff. Um, the only thing that needs to be done to this and needs to be equipped with lock sound. I did add. The custom lift rings all along the side of the locomotive in the top here. I had a new brass horn. I air conditioning units and clear antennas. The helper box. The front handrails have fallen off there in the display case. The only thing left I got to do to this locomotive is I got to add the MU cables and the uh, yeah MU lines and the MU cables. So and then that MU cable is actually going to run from here to the helper link box. Like I said, which I also bought from CMR. So I bought the helper links on both of these units. The signal box is on the conductor side here. I'll pick this guy up and show it around and show you. The SD40E box here. Right here on the nose. That also came from CMR. Like I said, the Sinclair antennas. And so did the air conditioner. I actually want to redo the air conditioner because I did. I don't like how it looks. So... So the other one here, the 6313. This is an after ready to roll model. This did come with the balls. Um, it does not have LEDs because it's got an Econami decoder that only supports the balls, so I can't wire up any LEDs. But this will have eventually lit number boards, uh, headlight, dish lights. It will not have lit rear number boards. Those are a pain in the butt to do. Actually, this model... Oh, that's right. This is the newer one. So this has got the already uh, lightable board. So I just got to do that. Um, this I did add custom lift rings to it. Uh, stats, the snow plow, and everything else is stock. The only thing I really had to do was add the boxes and the ditch lights. These are, this is 6313. This is one of the ones, this needs the actual flexicoil trucks, which I found there's a supplier on Shapeways where I can buy these, so that's where I'm going to get them. So, and they fit on SD40-2 trucks, which is the same kind of trucks that these take. But, so it's already had, it already had the MU cable clusters, and this one also needs its MU cable going from the front to the helper link box and back. 
So that's all what's done with this. This ha I added some clear antennas and also needs a new and needs the air conditioner on top. So that is just pretty much done, and this will also be getting the locks on V5, so that way these will be a beautiful running pair. As of right now, they run good, they sound good, they look good, they also need a couple extra warning labels applied. Um, so I did clear coat these in a doll coat just to seal everything in till later. So that's the only thing I'll have to do is put another clear coat on to get rid of any fingerprints, and then put a gloss coat on, add the extra decals, clear coat it one last time, and then call it good. So yeah, those are those two models. So we'll go on to the next locomotive or locomotives. All right, these next two locomotives need no introduction. These have been on the channels for years, but this is my Atom Genesis ES44 DC, and this is my Intermountain ES44 AC. So these locomotives, I've got a decoder buddy and lock sound equipped with these, but I did buy the wrong lock sound decoder. I did not buy the right one. I bought the NTC decoder. And for some reason, that kind of decoder does not allow me to configure CV6, which is the mid-speed. So these locomotives are slower, but I will be removing these decoders, selling the decoders. If not selling them, donating them, because I try to sell them and nothing helped. So the only thing I've done to these is, like I said, I removed the, uh, the original soundtracks. This had a Loke Pilot. This had a Loke Sound V4 that fried. This had Tsunami 2. Uh, this has got LEDs all over the place, including uh, walkway lights. This guy's got uh, walkway lights, ditch lights, number boards, ground lights. This has also got ground lights. Uh, so these are uh, almost up to scale train standards. Like I said, they just need new decoders. This engine's got all new handrails across the whole thing. I got a hold of scale trains. They sent me some. I, had, I think I paid a couple, about five to ten bucks. I can't remember. I bought them almost a year and a half ago. Um, handrails from the Pennsylvania Heritage Unit from the first run, so that way I can redo this unit. So I did that. It looks good. They both sound good. They got custom sound, uh, they got sound files that I've uploaded, and they look good. They sound good, but like I said, I can't really run them because, you know, bought the wrong decoders. The other thing I did do is I put KD scale head couplers on the fronts of these guys. I had a pair of them lying around, and I put them on. They look good. Um, eventually, all my locomotives and rolling stock will have the scale heads, but for now, I'm still using the number fives. Because, you know, they're the most available. It's hard to actually get a hold of scale heads around where I live. My uh, go-to place for locomotives and parts is uh, Train World in a place about two hours away from me called uh, Hobby Express. I go there a lot for parts, details, locomotives, and rolling stock. But most of the engines I buy are still from Train World and Scale Trains. Um, rolling stock, it's half and half. I buy half from... Train World, I buy some from Hobby Express. Hobby Express is more of your uh, MSRP prices. They more sell at those because, you know, they are a hobby shop. They actually have to pay bills. Unlike Train World, where they can give you decent prices and they're also so much bigger. But the one thing I do buy from Hobby Express a lot is Walter's mainline cars because they are priced the exact same as online as they are in store. So I just pick up Walter's mainline cars from there. But for the most part, uh, they do carry, Hobby Express does carry a lot of the older stock parts, like A-line parts and stuff like that. So I do get quite a few parts from them. They're definitely my part supplier. Um, and later on, you'll also see, I also buy Digitrax decoders. They have a lot of Digitrax decoders there, and they're priced about the same as online. So I pick them up there in bulk. I get quite a few. I normally buy four or five at a time. So, you know, I buy about $100 $120 worth of decoders at a time. And, in fact, we're actually only four locomotives away from having my entire fleet DCC. Actually, five, because we do have a fried decoder in one engine. Uh, that will not be featured today because of the fact that it is a fried decoder, and you guys have also seen it. And there's nothing new about it, so we'll move on to the next locomotive. Alright, the next set of locomotives here we got is some uh, an old guy that's been here around, but you probably won't recognize it, and then a new one that we've picked up and done some upgrades. So this guy in the background here is No Fox 3558. This is one of the two Atom Blue Box ST40-2s I've had for years. It goes all the way back to when I had a DC layout. So this guy has finally been upgraded with Lock Pilot. It's been super detailed. Um, it does need a couple more decals applied. I need to, I need to add, no, it's got the rear ditch lights. Yeah, it's pretty much adding a couple extra decals to make it look that much better. But it has been super detailed. It's got uh, wire, gra uh, wire lift wings, rubber, wire grab irons. It needs, MU, it needs the MU cables and receptacles on the front. Um, it will be getting can of fans, eventually. Um, but since it's NS black, it's pretty easy just to drill these out and then not fuss with it and put can fans on them. 
uh, they are in stock, so I'll be doing that. And then it needs the front. Uh, this one has the rear number boards cut out. I did cut this one out with the rear number boards. And like I said, it does have a lock pilot, so I do occasionally run it with my other SD40s, but since it's still a work in progress, I don't. But it is a nice model. I like it. This was originally my NW model, if you guys go way, way back on my channel. This was a no-folk and western model. So it's kind of fitting that it is now a no-folk southern model, and it's being used on my railroad as a standard. This will be some of the local power when I build my dream railroad of the Pennsylvania Horseshoe Curve and the Pittsburgh line between Altoona and I think the nearest Cola, which I think is Lily. But it will be modeling the NS mainline. So the new engine, the other engine here is no introduction. Everyone knows what this is. This is Snowfox 7 SD70 ECE number 3010. The forgotten heritage unit because it does have the unique number boards, which I think now it just has standard number boards. But I'm modeling 2011 to 2017, so this is... This was freshly debuted with this. Um, so this locomotive I bought off of Facebook Marketplace used, lightly used. It did come with Tsunami 2. Actually, no, it came with Tsunami, not Tsunami 2. Uh, so the things I've done to this is I've ripped out the Tsunami, ripped out the bulbs. It's now got LED headlights, ground lights, ditch lights, front and rear, and uh, like I said, locks on V5. So it's also speed map from five scale trains. I run this engine quite often. I haven't in a while because I've been getting, letting the newer engines do some running. But this is a beautiful engine. Runs great, sounds great. I love it. So glad I picked it up, and I picked it up at a great price. So let's go on to the last two locomotives, which are true project engines. They don't even have, they're not even completed yet, and I'll show you those two next. All right, the last two models here is some project engines that are true projects. So in the back here, we got NS8106. This was the former Bachman Lehigh Valley Heritage Unit. I have stripped it. Since then, I have stripped it, uh, painted it, been adding details to it. Um, it's going to get a Lock 75 in it, but this engine will be, like I said, 8106. It would be one of the, it is my only current black ES44. I am hoping to get maybe a scale, a couple scale trains engines, or even some Bachman engines. If I get a decent price, I'm going to do the same job. Um, this does have the scale trains handrails. I have freaked on the handrails, and I've got a whole scale trains, and they sent me some black handrails. So I did that. So the next engine here. Uh, like I said, this is gutted, so it needs... This will be getting locks on V5 and a new horn, but this has been gutted. Uh, it's got the original motor. The newer Bachmans actually are not bad. These diesels are not bad in terms of their drivetrain and everything. They're actually really good. Um, but this needs more details. I gotta add the, uh, piping along the trucks. I gotta add the bell. I gotta get a new bell. Uh, like I said, it needs insides. Ignore the flashing lights. We're in a high wind warning where I live, so ignore the flashing lights. Um... I'm actually kind of surprised I haven't flashed for almost this entire video. <sighs> so the last engine here is a Atherton Blue Box AC4400 CW. This will become a Union Pacific AC44, so I have a little bit more foreign power on the railroad. Um, this is going to be in the, one of the units in the flag scheme. So what this engine needs is... I already painted the frame in the UP Gray. This is using... Uh, oh, what's that brand? Um, True Color Paints. Uh, but this has got the A-line etched metal stats up the nose. It's got die cat. Uh, this has got details with uh, uh, model snowplow. Oh, it's got wire grab irons throughout, throughout. Um, brass horn. It's got exhaust stack. All the fun stuff. Like I said, I've already painted the frame. It's actually got to get repainted because some of the paint chipped off. But this will be getting a Lox on V5 in it. This has got an upgraded motor. It's got, needs some more details added. Looks like actually a couple fell off. But this will become, like I said, a UP AC44. So this will be a very nice model and a very nice foreign power unit to run on the railroad. Um, I'm also planning on getting maybe one more UP unit and one more BNSF unit. So I can have a pair. Because when I buy engines, I either buy them in ABA sets or pairs. Oh! Um, so I have decided we... Um, we're not going to do rolling stock in this video. That'll be the next video. There's just so much, and i got to go through and figure out what I did in the rolling stock projects. Or I might just send them on the railroad and just go bang, 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 new uh, project, and we'll do that. But thank you guys so, so much for watching. Um, I hope you guys like this. I'm going to hopefully post these kind of videos every three months, roughly. Two to three months, every roughly. So there might be four to six videos this year of the Lakeview Back Shops. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Also, go to my new Facebook page. It is NS Productions 8104. Type it in, find it, follow it. You'll get more updates on projects, more recent updates, I should say, on projects, so that way you can stay more up to date with the current roster. All right, guys, hope you have a great day. Happy New Year. Uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.